In this video, we're going to talk about some properties of quadratic functions when it is in standard form. In the previous video, we talked about vertex form, which remember hopefully was a times x minus h squared plus k. Remember, this is the vertex form. For some information on how the vertex form works, please check out my other video. But in this video, we're going to focus on the standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. This is standard form. And while we don't get as much information at a glance from the standard form as we do from the vertex form, there is still some good information we can get out of ax squared plus bx plus c. So let's start by taking a look at that. When you have a parabola that is graphed from standard form or from vertex form, that parabola is going to look something like this. It's going to look U-shaped. And what's special about this U-shape is that it is symmetrical. This side mirrors this side. And the mirroring starts from a point called the vertex. It's the lowest or the highest point in your parabola. And that vertex also has what is called the axis of symmetry. It's kind of a dotted line that passes right through that vertex that splits the parabola in half. It almost acts like a mirror. This side mirrors that side. Well, to get that axis of symmetry, the way we find that, and let's write it down here, axis of symmetry... The way we get that is through x equals the opposite of b all over 2a. Taking this little formula, opposite of b over 2a, will give you an x value for this axis of symmetry. So if it was, say, x equals, it turns out, opposite of b divided by 2a, if that turned out to be 5, well, we now have the equation for the line... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. This is our dashed axis of symmetry, and it's going through x equals 5. I didn't give us a quadratic function, so I know nothing else about the graph, but I know that somewhere on this axis of symmetry, we have our graph being split into a left side and a right side. Now, this formula for axis of symmetry comes back to help us also. Because if you remember, I told you that the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, which is the lowest or the highest point in our parabola. So let me erase these real quick. Okay. In a parabola that is facing up, the vertex, which I'm going to put right here, this vertex right here is the lowest point you will see. It is the lowest because as soon as we hit this lowest point, we start going all the way back up and we have our symmetrical shape. Now, if we have our parabola reflected across the x-axis, meaning it is upside down, something like this, well, in a graph like this, our vertex, which I'm going to put right here, this is going to be the highest point in our function because we are going up, 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 up until we get to the vertex, and then we work our way back down. Now, the vertex, the little function, I shouldn't even call it a function, but the little formula we can use for the vertex starts off with this. The vertex x-coordinate is found by taking the opposite of b and dividing by 2a. That'll give you the x-coordinate, which is our axis of symmetry. But then, if we want the true vertex, we need a y-coordinate. Because, well, it's a point in a coordinate plane. You need two points. I well, shouldn't say two points. You need two coordinates in x and a y. To get your y-coordinate, find out what the original function is at that x value. 
So we have the x being found out by the opposite of b divided by 2a. And then we find out the y by taking whatever this was and putting it into the full function. So let's take an example of this and see how it works with actual numbers. Here we have the quadratic function in standard form of x squared minus 4x plus 6. We want to find the axis of symmetry. and the vertex. And we find both of those by using x equals the opposite of b all over 2a. We'll use that little formula to find both pieces. So let's start off with the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is found just by using this. What is our b? It is negative 4 what is our a? It is 1. So with that information, we can set up the equation as x equals the opposite of b. Since b was negative 4, we're going to have a positive 4. All over 2 times 1, which is 4 over 2, which equals 2. This means that in our graph, we don't know exactly what it is without truly graphing it, but we have an axis of symmetry right here, going through x equals 2. Now we can use that information to get our vertex. Because remember from the beginning, the vertex is the opposite of b over 2a, comma, the function evaluated at the opposite of b, all over 2a. Well, we know the x part already. The x part is 2. It's always going to be part of our axis of symmetry. So we know the vertex is 2 comma something. To get the y, I need to plug 2 into the original function. So I can say I have 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 6. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, so I have 4 minus 8, which is a negative 4, plus 6, which is a positive 2. And there is our vertex. We can graph it at the spot 2, comma 2. And then from there, we could figure out what the graph looked like if we created a table and found some more points. Because it is a positive x squared, we know it's going to open up. So it's going to look something like this, but we won't know exactly what it is until we actually create a table and get some other points. Now there is one other thing we can figure out from our standard form. We found the axis of symmetry, we found the vertex, the last thing we can find is the y-intercept of the function. So let's take a look at that. So here we have that same function again, x squared minus 4x plus 6. We already know that the vertex is at 2 comma 2, which I put in here. But I want now the y-intercept, which we should know is the spot where the graph touches the y-axis. Well, a y-intercept is always on the y-axis, and it always happens when x equals 0. So if I put 0 in for my x's, the only thing left is the constant at the end, the c. So our y-intercept here is 0, 6. And I can put the little dot there. So I know my graph is going to move up and go through that point. That was terrible that I missed. Let me try that again. It's going to go up and through that point. And since it's symmetrical, I know that by going left 2, I'm up 6. So if I go right 2, I will be at the same value and have something going like that. 
And there we have it. There's what we can find from standard form of quadratic equations. Hopefully you found this video useful, and now you can find your axis of symmetry, your vertex, and your y-intercept. Good luck.